Hey guys, it's Lance at Max Sound Solutions, and today we have a new enclosure in town. This is the Mate Mini by B-Link, and this is really interesting. It's Thunderbolt 5. It's for your M4 Pro Mac Mini. It has extra ports, but the price is so reasonable. It's like $139. There's two different models. There's the A version, which takes two NVMEs, and there's the B version. I opted for the B version, which is a single NVMe, so you're going to get that full 6,000 megabytes per second read and write speeds or close to it, we're gonna test it out. And it comes with a 2.5 gigahertz ethernet port, two USB-A ports, a headphone jack, and a card reader. It also comes with two of these USB-C connectors so you can have it sitting underneath your mini or on top of your mini. You know, these enclosures, when they're set up that way, can affect your Wi-Fi. So we're gonna be testing that out to see if it does create any interference with our Wi-Fi. And we're gonna test the speed of the NVMe, and the USB-A ports and the 2.5 gigahertz port. All for the low price of $139. But honestly, <laughs> that is pretty impressive to squeeze all that in. So let's check it out. We'll do a quick unboxing. It's a very Apple-like packaging. It looks like Apple might have packed it themselves. It does not come with any tools to do the install of your NVMe. There are the two USB data connectors. You only need one of them, depending if you want the Mate Mini sitting on top of your Mac Mini or underneath your Mac Mini. So here are all the ports on the back and to save money, they don't give you a power supply for this unit, but it does run off the internal power with the Mac Mini. You don't need a power supply, but if you have a very power hungry hard drive, you may need to give it a little more juice with a USB-C charger. Once you get the cover off, you can now scan the QR code there and there's a little video on how to do the rest of the job but it's very easy it's basically four more screws and the one screw that holds down the NVMe. I'm installing my Western Digital SN850X 2 terabyte. Put the screw back in for the NVMe, remove the tape for the thermal pad, and seal her up. And while it does have a fan, I didn't hear it once during my stress test. It's virtually silent, unlike the Orico Mini Mate, not to be confused with the Mate Mini. So here it is connected to the Mac Mini with the USB connector that they give you. And the funny thing is, when you have this on the bottom and not on the top like I have it here, there's no way to power the Mac Mini because the Mac Mini is sitting on top of the Mate Mini and you can't get your finger in there to get to the power button. So the Mate Mini really needs to be on the top. If it's on the bottom, how are you going to power up your Mac Mini? Not sure what they were thinking there. So obviously I'm going to keep mine sitting on top of the Mac Mini. And the Mac Mini's Wi-Fi antenna is located on the bottom of the Mini, so you're better off having this on top anyway. So first I wanted to test the Wi-Fi and I gotta say it definitely gets affected by the Mate Mini. When the Mate Mini is underneath the Mac Mini, that was the worst scenario. You can see it's dropping down to 130 megabits per second. It really should be over 800. And this is the Mate Mini sitting on top of the Mac Mini and I'm getting what I should be getting, which is 866 megabits per second. But I ain't gonna lie, it did drop down on occasion, but it was definitely better than having it underneath the mini. So just a quick test on the NVMe. It's running pretty close to what it was running in my external Thunderbolt 5 case. I was getting, you know, close to 6,000 and that's pretty much the same here. It was really consistent. I did a bunch of reading and writing and it didn't really fluctuate. It pretty much was rock solid. Not quite as fast on the right speeds, but pretty good. And I also just got to point out that this is not a certified Thunderbolt 5 enclosure. It's actually USB 4 version 2. It's 80 gigabits per second. As you can see, the system profiler does not lie here. It's showing us that it's not certified Thunderbolt. It's actually USB 4 version 2. Thunderbolt can go all the way up to 120 gigabits per second for video signals and things of that nature. This is strictly a hard drive enclosure. It doesn't have any video outputs. So even though it's not certified Thunderbolt, you're still getting that same speed of 80 megabits per second, which is the same for USB 4 version 2 and Thunderbolt when it comes to SSDs. So I run my home folder on my external SSD and now it's in the 
Mate Mini. And you can see that I'm getting better speeds with the Mate Mini on the larger file read and writes. But on the smaller random 4K read and writes, the Mac Mini is winning on the last test, which are the tiniest little files. And that means things will load a little snappier, but it pretty much seems to be a draw. And I don't think you'd notice any difference in your day to day use. So now we're going to transfer a typical Final Cut Pro project of mine from my external Mini Mate to the internal SSD, which is only a 512 gig. So there's that. It has a smaller cache amount. And when the cache gets full, like it did just then, it drops in speed. So you get about 120 gigs written at the full three gigs per second speed, and then it drops drastically to 350, 500, 200, you know, it's bouncing all over the place. So it took two minutes and 33 seconds to transfer the 175 gigs from the Mini Mate to the Mac Mini. And now we're going in the opposite direction from the Mac Mini to the Mini Mate, and it only took 45 seconds, whereas it took two minutes and 33 seconds to write to the Mac Mini's SSD. And of course, this is a two terabyte SSD compared to the smaller 512, so it's got a much larger cache than the Mac Mini's internal SSD does. So while we had a couple of blips in the speed, it really sustained a much higher transfer rate and it never thermal throttled. So the Mini Mate handled the transfer really well. Here's the 2.5 gigabit ethernet adapter. It is a real tech and it does not support enabling jumbo frames. And that probably explains why I'm only getting 200 megabytes per second read and a better write speed of 264, 65. It should be more up in the 300 megabytes per second range, maybe all the way up to 350. So it's performing okay, but it's not doing that great because again, there is no jumbo frame support. I think the write speed is pretty much where we should be, but the read speed is a little slow, but it's still double your normal one gigabit speed. But that being said, I'm editing this video off my NAS via the 2.5 gigahertz port. And just to show you, we're getting about 370, 350 read and write on the USB-A ports, which are five gigabit. I wish they were USB 3.2, 10 gigabit, but they are not. They're USB-A, five gigabit. And the card reader, which is on the right-hand side of the unit as you're facing it sort of towards the rear, I would prefer if it was on the front of the unit, but regardless, it's getting around 100 megabytes per second read and write, which is what you would expect. Okay, well, that sums it up for today, folks. The B-Link Mate Mini. What do you guys think? I think it's a pretty good deal. All for the low price of $139. Check out my next video will be about my 10 gigabit network, which I have just recently set up, and I have a Ugreen NAS on the way. That will be my next video. So stay tuned, give me that thumbs up, and I will see you on the next Max Sound Solutions video.